What's going on everybody? My name is Adam James and I'm a plastics engineer with years of experience using CAD engineering software. In this Fusion 360 tips and tricks tutorial, I'd like to go over how to create internal and external threads in Fusion 360. This is a forum topic that I found on the Autodesk Fusion 360 forums uh, and it has about 10,000 views which means it's pretty popular and people are interested in how to do it. Now, this is a feature that took me a little bit to learn because a lot of different CAD softwares um, allow you to identify and define different internal and external threads, but they don't actually create the geometry uh, for those features. So for example, uh, if you're using a CAD software other than Fusion 360, like Katia, for example, and you define a thread on an internal or an external face, it'll allow you to uh, then create a 2D drawing and identify that previous specified feature. But if you were to go 3D print that CAD geometry and create an STL file and then create a G code file, those threads wouldn't actually be populated. Uh, so for example, you'd actually have to create a spline around the, a cylinder and then create a thread uh, which sweeps that spline uh, and then create an external thread around that. So it's a little more difficult, but Fusion 360 makes it really easy to tackle those design problems uh, in a really efficient way uh, within the software. So with that being said, let's jump on over to the Fusion 360 forums and uh, see what we can find. So it looks like this has 10,173 views. That is pretty impressive. Uh, and so I think going forward, that's going to be how I identify which topics I choose. Uh, the ones with the most views are the most popular, right? And those are the ones with which the users are experiencing the most issues or are most interested in. Uh, so MMC Daniels says, creating internal and external threads that can screw into each other. Let's say I want to model and 3D print a nut and bolt which can screw together. What's the best way to create external threads bolt which can screw into internal threads nut? I understand how to use the thread utility by selecting faces. However, it's not clear if the utility treats internal versus ex external threads differently. One thread would need to be extruded from the base cylinder while the other needs to be cut from the base cylinder. Note, I'm using physically modeled threads because the parts will be printed perfect. It's exactly what we want to demonstrate, right? Uh, it does look like there is a solution. Again, I'm going to give my approach and then we can go from there and contribute it to the forum um, prior to looking at other people's solutions. So let's go on over to Fusion 360. I think going forward, I'd like to actually show you a preview of the end result, just in case this isn't exactly what you were searching for. Um, so in this video, we're going to create this external component with internal threads and then create an internal component with external threads. Um, let me turn the section analysis off here so you can see exactly what this looks like. Oops, analysis. So it'll look something like this. I'll have a gap and then it'll have threads going all the way through. Um, and you'll actually be able to 3D print both of these and screw them together. That's the idea. So let's actually demonstrate how to do it. We'll do a new design. We will save this as internal component two, because there's already a one. Oh, well, I guess it could have been internal component one. Anyways, uh, we will create a sketch, go on the top plane here, C for circle. Uh, let me exit out of this. Okay. C for circle. Uh, escape. D for diameter. Left click on this guy and give it a dimension of 50 millimeters for the diameter. And we also want to do C for circle and do another smaller um, circle in the middle. D for diameter and maybe just give this a value of 20 millimeters. Uh, just giving it enough room so that the threads can come in 
inside here. Finish the sketch, we will click on the outer ring here, go to extrude, just drag the arrow up maybe 40 millimeters, Oop, 40 is fine. Now here is where we get to the thread creation. If we click on create and then go all the way down to thread, it just it's just asking for a face. That's all it's asking for. So this is the face. Uh, and typically, most people would just click OK. Um, and that looks pretty good, right? All said and done. Well, the problem with this is it's not actually modeling the geometry of these threads. Um, and it kind of looks off in that respect, if you can see. Um, it's kind of got this transparent, not fully, it doesn't look right. Um, so, and to show an example, what I'd like to do actually is if we go to the top left here, go to file, 3D print, uh, deselect, send a 3D print utility. If we were to try to 3D print this hollowed uh, cylinder with threads, you'll notice, it, and maybe this doesn't make sense if STL or G code is um, relatively new for you, but um, these triangles essentially are just going along a regular cylindrical surface and they're going all the way down and up the cylinder. So if we were to 3D print this, this would just be a hollowed out cylinder with no threads. And you might be asking, well, why did it do that? I, you know, I thought we were modeling geometric threads that we could 3D print. Oh, I don't want to 3D print that. Um, and there's a solution. So left click on the thread one here, uh, and then right click, edit feature. There's one uh, box we did not select and that's modeled. So you can see now that it's actually geometrically modeling the thread features in the CAD. And for our purposes, that's exactly what we want to do. File, 3D print, and then select it. Now you'll see all those little triangular STL, or the triangular elements generated for the STL model are much smaller and they follow the path of the thread geometry. So if you were to export this as an STL file, uh, import it into a slicer like Cura, uh, and then export it as G code, you'd actually be able to 3D print um, CAD based on this geometry, which is awesome, and that's exactly what we want to do. Um, so that looks all good. Let me just remember, I'm going to go back to the sketch here. Edit sketch. I just want to remember what, okay, so I used 50 millimeters for the outer diameter and 20 for the inner. Okay. You'll just need to remember that when you create your external component around it. Um, so let's actually create the assembly now. So we'll do a uh, new design, save as thread assembly two. <sighs> let's load and grab a fresh swig of coffee. back in the thread assembly. Left click on internal component two. Um, we're going to insert into current design. There it is, press okay. Right click on it, let's just ground it so it doesn't move. Perfect. Now, what we would like to do is create a new component. So left click on the assembly so you can right click, new component. No surprises here. We will name this external component two. Make sure it's activated. Create sketch. We're just gonna do it on the top of this face. And because this is hollowed, we can use the origin as our center point. So this diameter, we can probably, I think it was 50 for the interior, so we can make this 70s fine. 20 millimeter difference here. <clears throat> but we also need our 50 millimeter diameter. 
Now, at this point, you're probably asking, well, why don't you make it like 50.15 or something to give it a tolerance, right, if we're 3D printing? Well, the thread software actually uh, accounts for, um, for tolerance. So it includes it, which is really helpful. So if you're creating threads like we are, um, you don't actually have to um, include the tolerance within your initial design. So we'll just do 10 millimeters here. Click on this external, go to the drop down, show the sketch. So then we can grab this outer ring that we previously drew, click extrude, and then just click on the bottom face of the internal component. Click OK. And just for this purpose, we're going to select on the bottom face of the internal component and then click the eye to hide it so that we can access the surface on the inside. So make sure the external component is activated. Go to create the red. Click on the internal surface. Make sure we click modeled, right? And click OK. Now we do want to make sure that the threads were created the same. Now, without going back and forth um, between the different designs, going to edit feature, double checking that you know it's isometric, 50 millimeters, M50 by 4, 6H right hand, all that good stuff. What you can do is go up to inspect section analysis and then just say select a plane like this, select OK, and we want to hide or show the other component. And that'll kind of just give you a really quick um, preview to make sure that they both use the same pitch size, pitch is the distance between the threads, um, and the same diameter. And in this case, this looks spot on. You can see it has a tolerance um, in between the threads, so there won't be any interference when we, ch when we print these out and try to screw them on. Um, and that's essentially it. That's how you create internal and external threads within Fusion 360. Um, what I'd like to do uh, for my next video, and guys, let me know in the comments below um, if this sounds like something you'd be interested in, but I lost the cap to my hydro flask and I actually ended up, this is kind of how I came up with this topic, right? I came up with um, my own replacement that I 3D printed. This is just out of PLA, so obviously you don't want to leave it out in the sun. <laughs> um, but I think the key takeaway here is that the next video could actually be a realistic demonstration of, hey, how do we have like, or how do we measure, say, a hydro flask and the pitches uh, and the internal uh, diameter to create uh, an external component, right? Like this to replace something that you could actually use. So I actually emb em em emboss the uh, logo on there too. Just found an SVG file. SVG file creation could be another video as well. So there's endless possibilities for the next uh, bit of content. Um, but if you guys found this helpful, uh, leave a comment, like, subscribe, and I will catch you on the next one.